And then what happened? You had um, King uh, Solomon, King Solomon sinned against the Most High. And what he did was this, it wasn't the fact because he had multiple women, that wasn't the sin, because you can have multiple wives and all that. You could have had a, you could have had a thousand or plus concubines or wives and all of that. But what was what what went wrong was the fact that um, he was led away into worshiping the gods of Moab and Ammon. Okay, I think it was Moab or Ammon, one of those gods he was worshiping that came from that um that nation. Okay, that was the sin. That's when the going went wrong. So after that sin was committed, what happened? All of the tribes split. You had um, I believe it was um Yerubim. Took one, took one of the, took one of the, um, the, the northern kingdom and split, split them, to, split them from, from, to, from being together. So now we're in a day and age where the enmity that, or should I say, the other uh, friction that we had as all of us is that's that's now being destroyed, and we all coming together now. Okay, because that that was even going on even in these times because you got so-called Mexicans or so. so some so-called Latinos yeah. that have a hatred against the so-called Negroes yeah. or the so-called black person. Yeah. All right, but this truth, what this truth is doing is this truth is destroying that gulf to where we can now come together now and we see out of eye. You know, we see that we have a common enemy. We're going right. through the same similar oppression and that kind of sort of thing. And we're realizing that the word is for, is for or they, they're realizing that the word is for them. Okay, and then they're, they're, they're brothers and sisters. Alright? Yes, so um who was reading? Okay. Isaiah eleven and thirteen. Yeah, you yeah, you read the point. Go on, yeah, go on. Isaiah eleven and thirteen. The envy of it's like the envy also of Ephraim shall depart. Right. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Exactly, brother. The envy of Judah, what is it? The envy of uh read that again. The envy of the envy also of Ephraim shall depart. Right, the and envy of Ephraim shall depart, go on. And the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim all shall right, all right. Go on. Ephraim shall not envy Judah. Right. And Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Exactly. So that, that friction that the, 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 the two heads had together, that's all gonna go. And that's all going because this word this word is bringing them together. Okay, Israel and, and um, Jerusalem, yeah. bringing them all together and having them walk in the same format. Okay, yeah. and that format is this truth. Anyway, brother, you should come. Uh, back in Ephesians, so... Uh, and that's one aspect of it, by the way, go on. Well, so verse 18 of Ephesians 2 and 18, it says, For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Yep. Uh, now, therefore, ye are no more, more strangers and foreigners, yep. but fellow citizens with the saints. Okay. And of, and of the household of Yahweh. Go up a couple of verses that you read before. Um, when we became one body. Ephesians 2 and 14, it says, um, For he is our peace, who have made both one, and have broken down the middle, uh, the middle wall of partition right. between us, right. having abolished in his flesh the enmity, okay. even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, okay. for to make in himself of twain, one new man, yep. so make him peace. Make him peace, go on. And that he might reconcile both unto Yahweh in one body by yep. the cross, having slain the enmity there. Right, so we were made into one body. Not only have we been made into one body by uh, the other tribes coming together, but also the Israelites that were scattered abroad. As we all woke up to this truth, not just in America, okay, we all woke up to this truth at the same time. And we all together now. So let's say if there's a brother in Holland, right? And we we gonna greet him with the same Yahweh Shabbat, the same greeting. That's right. Okay? Because we all teach the same thing. Because we're all connected. We're all connected to the same because of the because of the doctrine that we preach. So what's happening is we're living in the book, the book of Acts uh, 2.0. Go on, bro. Yeah, uh Verse 17, and came and preached to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Start from verse 14 again. Uh, Ephesians 2 and 14, for he is our peace, who have made both one, and have broken down the middle 
the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, yep. even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, okay. for to make in himself. Yeah, because he, he were at enmity against the law and the commandments. Because when you really further go deeper, because we're in sinful flesh, like Paul was making reference to in the book of Romans, the um, Roman, not is it Romans? Romans, I believe it was Rome, the Romans, the seventh chapter where he spoke about himself as a as an old wretched man that he was and that he wanted to do the right thing yeah, yeah. but his flesh Romans was leading seven. him to do the wrong thing. Romans 7. Yeah. Alright? And that's exactly what we're going through. We really can't keep the laws to the best of our ability. I mean, all of the laws, I mean, we can only go keep it to the best of our ability but not all of the laws we can keep because we're in sinful flesh yeah. and we live in a, we live in a, um, a society that prohibits us from keeping all of the laws. So the most I already knew what kind of a state was going to be in. That's why grace had to come in effect. And this is it right here. Come on, bro. It's uh, verse 15 again. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in wilderness, yeah. for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Yeah, so making peace, go on. And that he might re reconcile both unto Yahweh in one body by the cross, yep. having slain the enmity thereby. They have slain the enmity thereby. So in other words, what's gonna happen is, is like I said, we're all gonna be connected with one another. So we're all gonna be connected with one another, right? And it's true, and we're gonna be connected with the law, statutes, and commandments, okay? So instead of us being an enmity between, against the law, and the enmity against the most high, we're all going to be one with all of that. That's in the book of Hebrews. Tell you what, hold what you got, brother. Give me Hebrews, the eighth chapter now. He, he has Hebrews um, chapter, uh, Hebrews 8, verse 10. If I'm correct on that. Okay. It speaks about the, um, the laws and the human parts. Hebrews 8, verse 10. This is a covenant. That's my yeah. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel mm -hmm. after the day, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind right. and write them in their hearts. Yep. And I will be to sorry, and I will be to them a power. Right. Go on. And they shall be, be to me a people. Right. So in other words, what the Most High is going to do, the Most High is going to make our mind, body, and soul so that we can keep the commandments. So it's going to be natural for us to keep the commandments. Okay? Because if we didn't keep the commandments and we sinned, that resulted to what? Our downfall as a race of people. That resulted to us going into slavery. Okay? That resulted to us being in a degradable situation right now. Simple things such as sin. So the most is going to change that around and put those laws on our inward parts so that we don't go off again. So that we can pretty much grow. Okay? And invoke life into the planet because if we're going to be the rulers and the, the priests, mm -hmm. that's that's what the Most High wants, don't you? Yeah. Right. So in order, in order for us to invoke that that spirit perpetually, we can't sin. All right, and then we're going to have those immortal bodies too. All right. So we're going to be totally perfect and complete to set up the everlasting kingdom pursuant to Daniel's the seventh chapter. <coughs> anyway, that's all I wanted. Yes, to so go back to and do what you have, brother. All right. Uh, verse 17 it says no, I'll start from 16 again it says and that he might reconcile both unto Yahweh in one body by the cross yep. having slain the enmity then by it, yep. and came and preached peace to you which were afar off okay. and to them that were nigh right and to them that were nigh so you had those that were nigh and, and to them that were far off so who, who were them that were nigh them that knew they were Israelites the Jews and them that were far off were, were referring to the um the Israelite foreigners, in other words, the Gentiles of the New Testament, bringing them together in peace. So not only are we at peace with the Northern Kingdom, the tribe of the, uh, the Kingdom of Judah, but we're also at peace with those that were scattered abroad as well. So this whole word brings us back to our original state and brings us to peace with one another and also towards the Most High and everything else. Because check this out, right? Yahweh Shine, he has many titles. Okay, he's known as what? He was known as the King of Righteousness. He was known as Solomon in the reincarnation. If you can perceive what I'm saying, yeah. okay. 
Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace, okay? And he's that same spirit coming back all over again, bringing forth peace. And one thing of this shoot, the shoot brings brothers together and to the point where we don't really argue. All right, that's the that's what I noticed about the shoot. Now you may have brothers that may argue and they, they may have their differences or whatever, but it's it's, it's a rarity. Right. You know what I mean? Once we come to that understanding of something that we don't understand, then we all agree it all over again. Okay, go on, brother. Good afternoon. So, oh, you got a preset, yeah? Yeah, yeah, So Isaiah nine and six. For unto us a child is born, right. unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Right, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Go on. And his name. Uh, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, right. the Mighty, Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. The water brother for that. So he's known as the Prince of Peace. Why is he known as the Prince of Peace? Because that's what he came to do. He was the vessel to bring peace. Yes. Okay, and to also resurrect all of us together back in one to the truth. All right. And guess what? There was another guy that did that too. Elijah the prophet. Give me somebody, hold me that. Give me um Matthew 17, verse um, oh, believe it's verse 20, and then give me Malachi of 4. Was um, Elijah John the Baptist in the reincarnation? Yeah, John the Baptist, yeah. That's it, that's it. Malachi Yeah, Malachi 4, yeah. I think it's the last couple of verses yet. Yeah. So, uh, Malachi 4 and 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Yeah, we don't, we don't. I'm talking to myself. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yeah, I'll read it again. Malachi 4 and 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Right, so that's what he did in this day and age because see, everyone on this planet is reincarnated. And if you were real, if you were if you were a prophet back in the past, you're gonna come back and do that same thing all over again. Okay, if you were let's say you was a Sodomite back in the day, right? Back 200 years ago, you come back as a newborn baby. You're gonna play out that same similar thing that you did before. Okay? That's why it says the things which are subject unto the prophets are unto the prophets. I'm roughly paraphrasing it. Right, the spirit of the prophets is subject unto the prophets. So, like I'm gonna say again, if you was a prophet 2,000 years ago, or a thousand years ago, or three, four thousand years ago, you're gonna come back in your same life and do the same thing all over again. Okay? Yeah, so um you got some, right? Yeah, you were talking about Judah and Ephraim coming back together and us all being together. This is Psalms 133 and uh, 1. Okay. It says, Behold, how good is it, so it's lucky. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Right. And that's what we're doing. Yeah, okay, go on. This is uh, Isaiah 11 and 11. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people right to recover the remnant of his people you're going to have some that are going to be outside of, of the um the truth i'm talking about back then and you're going to have some that knew they were jews and they're going to believe okay but that's that stands today true as well because we're all coming from all walks of life every last one of us has come some of us have came from the hood some of us came from the middle class set some of us came from a high set okay but if we all see this truth as one and with the word, we're one body. That division is pretty much done. Because what divided, what divided us is this world. Yeah. Okay, go on, brother. It says, which shall be left from yeah, Assyria, uh, 17 and, and 11, from Egypt, 17 and, 11. and from Paphros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from the and from the islands of the sea. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations. I tell you what you do, read Malachi 4 again, and then read Matthew 17 and 11, brother. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel, and, to, and, and gather together the dispersed of Judah right, from the four corners of the earth. And that's ultimately the plan of the law. So when the Messiah returns, he's going to gather, literally gather, us from the country that we were scattered abroad in. Those showers are going to come, okay, and take us out of here from the other uh, nuclear destruction and bring us back home to, to the nation of Israel. And we're going to be the government 
that's going to set up the new kingdom. That's why it says that the government was upon his shoulders. Because we're going to be the government setting up the new kingdom. Okay? That's how this thing is playing out. It says, uh, <coughs> you go on. The envy also of Ephraim shall depart, mm -hmm. and the adversaries of Judah shall, shall be cut off. Right, and the adversaries of Judah shall be cut off, going all the way back to Ezekiel 37. And really what's happening as well as is the formulation of the house of David is coming back too. Because during the time of David, all of the tribes were together. It's only when, when Solomon committed sin, that's when the tribes split. That's when the curse came between the two tribes. Now we're, living, now we're coming back as it was in the days of old when David was on the scene. All of the tribes are coming together. You have, what is it, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Gad, Reuben, Vanessa, Asher, etc. Okay? There's no eminency, there's no friction there. We all good now. Go on, brother. Right, so I'll just finish off. It says, um, Ephraim shall not envy Judah, yep. and Judah shall not vex Ephraim. Yep. But they shall fly upon the sh on the shoulders of the Philistines, of the Philistines yep. towards the west. They shall spoil them of the east together. Yeah, meaning we're gonna come with the nations now, like it, like it was during the time of King David. When King David was um, fighting those nations, he wasn't fighting by himself. He had an army behind him. Yep. And they were all of all of the tribes. Mighty men, yeah. They were all mighty men of all of the tribes. So the Most High is awakening the prophets and certain mighty men within the house of David. Okay, that's what the third temple is. The third temple is really the men that are, that are being awoken. <coughs> anyway, brother, um, yeah, read what you got. They shall lay their hand upon Edom and Moab, and the children of Ammon shall obey them. So we're going to finally get our hands our royal hands on the neck of Edom, man. That's right. We're going to bust them upside the head pursuant to Revelation. That's right. The second chapter, man. That's right. And also <coughs> these Moabites, too, for what they did unto our people. Like it says in the Old Testament, two for two, uh, what is it, mouth for mouth, etc. You know, you know what I'm saying. <coughs> so Genesis 49, 8. <coughs> Judah, thou art, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Yeah. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Right, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. And, and check this out too, because King David, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna set that spirit up so we're gonna go against these, these other nations. Okay? We're gonna put hands on them. And also Judah, because Judah was afflicted by um, um Esau. So the main guys that are gonna go get Esau is the, is the tribe of Judah or the kingdom of Judah. Let me put it that way. Go on, brother. Precept. Amos 9, 11 says, In that day will I rise up the, uh, up the tabernacle of David mm. that is fallen yep. and closed up the breaches. and right, closed, closed up the breaches thereof. Oh. Breaches thereof. And I will rise up his, his ruins and I will build it as, as in the, in days, the of old. days of old. That's exactly what this word is doing. He's using the, uh, the Prince of Peace's word and bringing us all back together again. That's that peace. Okay, so um, a little bit more out. Um, Twelve. Finish. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of the, tab the heathens, which yep. are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Last one. Jump down to fifteen. Okay. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of the, their land, yep. which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. Yeah, we're not going to be brought out of our land anymore. We're no longer going to be scattered again. Because once we're in, once we're, once the kingdom is set up, that's it. We're gonna rule forever. That's in the book of Daniel's, is the seventh chapter. Okay. Now, brother, I want you to give me Malachi four again, and then read Matthew uh, seventeen verse eleven. <clears throat> but you read yours first. This uh, Baruch five and five. Arise, O Jerusalem, stand on high, and look about toward the east. And behold, thy children gathered from the west unto the east by the word of the Holy One, right, right. rejoicing in the remembrance of the Most High. Yep. Keep going. Ah, oh, that's it. No, it's all talking about um, okay. historical things. Okay, fine. This yeah. is uh, verse six. For they departed from thee on foot and were led away of their enemies. Mm -hmm. But the Most High bringeth, bringeth them unto the exalted with glory as the children of the kingdom. For the most high have appointed that every high hill and banks. No, I don't think that's it, brother. It's in uh, Malachi 4. 
in Balakar. Oh, you're, you're, oh, you're in the room. Okay. <laughs> we get Balakar for again. And then we go back to the room. Uh, Malachi 4 and 5 so it says behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord right and that happened because um, the, the dreadful day of the Lord it didn't come during the time of Yahweh Shah it came in this age so there was a man that came on the scene and brought us all the way back matter of fact let's keep reading it yeah I didn't, I didn't let you read the other one says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children. Right, turn off. Yep, turn off. And the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. And that's what Elijah the, that's what Elijah did. Okay, now there's a guy that we believe is Elijah the prophet, which to us it makes too, it makes too much sense that he that he's could very well be the Elijah the prophet. Okay, but I'm not gonna go into that right now because we gotta we gotta deal with you know we gotta let brothers you know grow grow the right way. We gotta give them the milk and then we, and then once the brother once the serve brother grows in, we give him the meat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we gonna I mean we're gonna touch on some meat scriptures and then we gonna we gonna keep it easy again. Go on, brother. Right, Matthew 17. I'll start at 10. It says, and his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? Right. And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them. Elias truly shall come, shall first come yep. and restore all things. Okay. But I say unto you that Elias has come already, and they knew him not. Right, they knew him not. But have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Right. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. Right. So they understood reincarnation. They knew, they understood. The disciples understood that. Elijah was going to come back, but he was going to be known as John the Baptist to restore all things. So it first began with, um, you know, the guy that, that um, brought his truth to light in this, in this age. Okay. He was the guy. And then Yahweh Shai now, he's not going to be the guy to further reconcile us back to the Heavenly Father. Okay. And I'm talking about physically through the salvation, those that believed in his truth. Okay. But it, but it took Elijah to bring us back to this world again, all over again. Because there was a time where we didn't even know this truth, man. We didn't know about it. Now it's here. <coughs> See, yeah, so go back to what you had before. What did you have before as well? Uh, Matthew 11 and 12. Okay, yeah, read that. So uh, Matthew 11 and 12. And from the days of John, the, it's like from the days of John the Baptist, so now the kingdom of heaven suffer violence. Yeah, what is that? What is that talking about? Is it talking about an actual kingdom or a building or, or a place? Or... No, it's not talking about that. It's talking about the people. We represent the kingdom of heaven which suffered violence. Now when we first suffered violence mainly began in 70 AD. Because the kingdom pretty much represents the people. Those that have the keys to the kingdom. We represent the kingdom. So let's do that again. Matthew's 11 and 12. I just said come to the front. She starts shouting. Because <laughs> like, he didn't want to be put on front street. Yeah. That's what he wants. So, uh, Matthew's 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. Right. And the violent take it by force. Right, and the violent take it by force. In other words, we, we were conquered as a, as a people. The people that um, have the kingdom. The people that were ordained of the kingdom. Or to have the kingdom, excuse me. They suffer violence because, see, the kingdom of heaven, the way the kingdom of heaven is going to be established is going to be established by the people that have the kingdom within them. Okay? That's why the scripture says the kingdom, the kingdom is not a, 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 a it comes of not to observe. Go on, bro. Yeah. Uh, Luke, Luke 17. 
chapter 20 it says and when he was demanded of the pharisees when the kingdom of yahweh should come yeah. he answered them and said the kingdom of yahweh cometh not with observation right the kingdom of yahweh cometh not with observation in other words the kingdom of heaven is not going to be over there or it's going to be over there go on neither shall they say lo here or lo there right. for behold the kingdom of yahweh is within you it's within you go on and, and he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of those days oh, yeah, yeah, of yeah. the Son of Man, yeah. and ye shall not see it. Right, and that happened, um, what is it, uh, 18 years ago, man? It happened 18 years ago. You know, the apostles thought that the Lord was going to come, and he didn't come. And that's why you got guys saying that GMS, um, they, they preached that uh, the Lord was going to come in the year 2000, but he didn't come. Prophecy stated that there was going to come a time and a day that we would desire to see the day of the Lord, but he would not come. Okay? So we're still on schedule with prophecy. Anyway, uh, so yeah, read, read that again. Verse, uh, I think it's 26. You have, you have. <coughs> yeah, read that again. It was, uh, Luke, Luke 17 and 20. <laughs> and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of Yahweh should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of Yahweh cometh not with observation. Right. Neither shall they say, Lo here or no there. there. Yeah. For behold, the kingdom of Yahweh is, is, is within you. Right, it's within you because it's the, it's the men that have the keys to the kingdom. They're the guys that, that are representing the kingdom or the third temple. Because who is the kingdom only going to come towards? As we always say, or we say for edification's sake, the nation of Israel. They're gonna set the kingdom up going, brother. Yeah, because like we are we are the kingdom. That's the standard that we're building up the kingdom as we speak. You know exactly, saying? exactly, yeah. It says um verse 22 it says, and he said unto the disciples, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of those days. Right. One of the days that of the Son of Man, and right. ye shall not see him. Right. And they shall say to you, see here, or see there, right. go not after them, nor follow them. For as light, for as the lightning that lighteneth out of one part, of, out of one part under heaven, shineth unto the other part under heaven. Right. So shall also the Son of Man be in his day. Right. Because what he's going, what's going to happen is when the, when the Messiah returns, all it says all eyes are going to see him. Right. How is all eyes going to see him? In other words, he's going to come with those chariots, and also that's in Revelation one and eight. And he's going to come with the uh, the gigantic chariot too. It's going to cover the entire earth. And that's where the deliverance is going to come from. That's how that's going to go. So that's how all eyes are going to see him. Revelation 1 and 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Yeah. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Right, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Why? Because the kindreds of the earth, in other words, the other nations, they know what he's going to do. And what they know is that the Lord is going to severely kick some ass, man. That's right. And blow them to powder. That's what they know. And that's why they're going to well because of him. And also that goes into the reincarnation there as well, because you're talking about uh, when it says and also them that pierced him so they, them which pierced him so yep. obviously this we're talking about the, the same people that killed you how shy yep. so I'll go back here today right mm -hmm. and they couldn't have been 2,000 years old no man can live to 2,000 years old so what is this talking about reincarnation back in the flesh yep. the cycle of life how it works is when let's say you died in this lifetime right and you went into the you, you would go before the heavenly father to be judged so you would stay in the spiritual world for a while, right? For a couple of, you know, a couple of centuries there and then. And then you would come back down as a newborn baby and relive your life again. Yeah, yeah. That's the cycle of life. Yeah. And then on earth, you would face, you would have to deal with your judgment due to the things that you did in the past life. Yeah. Okay? And the most of time, the, so that when he comes back, the timing is just right for him to get back, get justice. Right. Judgment. Right, exactly. So he's, exactly. a God, he's, a God, he's a God of judgment and justice. Yep. Not, not, not no, um, you know, all, all love and forgive and forget and, and right. you know, yep. But he's coming, he's coming back to uh, um, repay justice and judgment on the people yep. that pierced him. Yep, exactly, exactly. 
So they're, they're, so if anything, they have to be a part of some sect of government, like a police officer or some kind of military. That's going to be their luck, and the whole side's going to see them. Yeah. Go on. Personal, it's personal. They're still going to see you. Ephesians uh, 2 and 19, it says, Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Yeah, so we're no longer, we're no longer strangers now. Go on, read that again. Now therefore, ye, uh, Ephesians 2 and 19, Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners. Yeah, we are no longer strangers and foreigners, go on. But fellow citizens with the saints. But fellow citizens with the, with the saints. Oh, yeah, you know, you know what that reminds me of? Um, Isaac, somebody give me Isaiah 14 and uh, 1. And of the household of Yahweh. Right, and the household of Yahweh. So that's what we all represent. All of the brothers that have came into this truth and took on hold the garment of truth, we are now a house unto Yahweh. Okay, and also known as the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> that's who we are now. So we're no longer black guys and, and, and you know, with hoods and to the hip hop music. That ain't, yeah, that's not us anymore. Right. Run that, we put that away, man. That's right. yep. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? We're a world new, we're a world of um we have we have a different creed, and we're new people now. And really, we've been renewed, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. So what we're supposed to be, we don't. And uh, uh, verse 20, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and Yahweh Shah Hamasha himself yep. being the chief cornerstone. Being the chief cornerstone. So our foundation is Yahweh we're, we're standing on his foundation, building on, on, on that. Therefore, we are all, all, all at one. And, and the thing about it is, is that we need this truth. It's a lot We need Yahweh Shai, and us is preaching this truth alone. Okay? Well, really, if you have the truth, you can't have... You, you, I mean, if you have the truth, how, how am I going to say, how am I going to put this back? You can't have the truth without Yahweh Shai. You got to have both. Okay. It's just it come it comes with it. He is the truth. Yeah. He is the and truth. The life, right? What's that? And the life. And, and the life. life. Yep. Yeah, John, John 1. Yep. John 1 and 1. He was known as the word. The word came in the flesh, right? Go on, brother. Uh, verse 21, it says, In whom all the building fitly framed together mm. groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. Right, the holy temple. In whom ye also are builded together for a habitation of your house. So wait a minute, so spirit. every brother represents each brick of that, that holy temple. So you know, you got these people over there looking, you got these Christians looking for the third temple, not realizing that the third temple's over here. This is the third temple. Okay, go on, brother. Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Yahushai, he is a new creature. Right. Old things are passed away. Right. Old, the old things are passed away. The things of this world, what we became of this world. We wanted to become rap stars. You know, wanted to, you know, flaunt ourselves and be a part of this world. Put that away. Because you realize that this world has nothing to do with anything. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with what's going to come in the future. <laughs> and this world, most likely, what I should have said, has nothing to do with us. Okay? Go on, brother. Read this. You spoke about your house shall be in the rock and the foundation upon which we stand. Okay. This is uh, Luke chapter 6 and 47. And it said, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you whom he is like. Right. He is like a man which built a house and dig, dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. Right, and laid the foundation upon the rock. Go on. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon the house, mm. I could not shake it. Yep. For it's founded upon a rock. It was founded upon a rock, and that rock is Yahweh Shah. So because we stood on that rock, we stood on that, that, that foundation, we couldn't have never been overthrown. Okay, and there's been many of this, there's been, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this as well. You got Christians that will stand on the street, whether they be Edomites or so-called uh, Negroes, okay? And they'll uh, set up their little, found, their little thing, and they get kicked off the street. How come we didn't get kicked off the street? Now we used to get kicked off the street, but that was all due because the most I wanted to try us to see what kind of faith we had, okay?